What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Lost Records Journal, Play One vs. World's Lost Records Focus Podcast. I am one of your co hosts, Adnan. My other co host, Adam, Adam is here. Adam, you here? I, I'm here, and specifically why I'm not wearing a hat is because Adnan thinks I'm bald. Well, I told you to embrace this look. My, even, I'm not bald, though. <laughs> Well, no, because even um, even Dream Prism, Alex, who has been on a strange cast podcast before, said to me in a private message, because he went up to Pax West when he was asking yes. Jonathan Stowder and Felicia Kwan um, questions about Life is Strange. He went up there and he, I showed him a screenshot and he's like, wow, I look really bored. I was like, embrace it, sir. I like, but I'm Adam not bored. Awesome. <laughs> well, he's not bored either, but I'm like, I'm like, embrace it. The sooner you accept it. I very hate you. <laughs> I'm glad that you I have to censor me. The- <laughs> it doesn't swear that quickly. Like, yes. come on, man. Um, yeah, but anyway, Adam has got no hat on either. I flicked it off, in, if anything, because people wouldn't listen to the last episode. So I'm like, not yeah. go away. Um, but yeah, welcome back to the Lost Records Journal. Play One vs. World's Lost Records Focus Podcast. And if you are new here, as always, we do please ask if you can like the video, share your friends, comment, help support a very small channel. Um, and you can keep up to date with the channel as well if you subscribe as well. And also mm. as well, we have the Lost Records Journal on all podcast services. So we're available on Spotify, on that platform with the video version. We're available on Apple Podcasts. We're available on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, Apple Podcasts. We're available on everything. So go and check us out. We're now yes. 50 followers on Spotify alone, which thank you very much. And oh, also seven. Right. Also on Audible. Yes, you're on Audible, aren't we? That's really yes. a big one, that. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're now on Audible. So we're available on everything. I think this RSS feed gets us sent out to everything. So you can check us out on that. Um, and we've got seven five-star ratings. So if you can rate us, please do it. It really helps. And by the way, as well, I'll just to give you context as well. The Lost Records Journal is the sister podcast to Strangecast, um, where we cover a lot of things, including Lost Records content. Um, Strangecast has now gone to 27 ratings on Spotify and is now back at 4.9 rating. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yay! Hooray! But now my bald slung. head is going to put it down to 4.7. <laughs> well, for the Lost Records Journal, at least. We're still yes. on a... We're still decent on Strangecast. So thank you so much to everyone who rated that. And yeah, and Strangecast is recently available. There is a two-part special, so do check that out. And Erica Mori in one of those parts, Alex Chen herself. So do go and check that out. And thank you so much for all the recent support. Our channel is getting a lot of views at the moment. We're about, we'll just cost 1,250 subscribers. So thank you so much for that. Um, Adam, if anything, we're back here for the Lost Records content. We are now post Gamescom quite far into it. We're now seeing a lot of other little bit of content. So we kind of structured this into two parts um, and we mm-hmm. moved two of the interviews that we could cover onto this podcast because otherwise um, Strange House is going to go out of control in terms of how much news we can cover because we're heading to Life is Strange season. So we can kind of focus on it here. So should we kick into our first piece of interview, if anything? Uh, yes, let's, let's do this. Perfect. So I'm going to load up here. This is from Screen Run. <coughs> I've yes. actually read it through this entire thing recently, and I thought we'd pick out a couple of pieces here. There's two interviews we're going to go through, but this is one of the big ones. So mm-hmm. first of all, we start with the studio executive producer, Luke Bagadost here. Um, and in the question they asked in an interview a while ago, the team mentioned this could be this, um, uh, this could be setting the scene for future Lost Records entries as well. I would love to hear just a little bit more about the idea in general and how you're perhaps laying the groundwork for continuing this universe that and the narrative with this first entry and luke said and i quote yeah before this game we worked on the first life is strange game and the second one and there was a small connection between the games you knew they um, they were probably in the same universe but the games were quite different they were on the same basis of narrative driven games with dialogue options environmental storytelling for us this is our next game after life is strange 2 and we didn't in terms of quote unquote oh without the ip we cannot do anything end quote because the ip is owned by square enix so now Lost Records is the new IP. Bloom and Rage is the first game with this IP, and we all have the freedom to build what we want. We have this character, we these stories, but we have all these options to create, to reuse characters, to change settings, to keep the core features. We like to develop new ones um, and to pursue the path of narrative games that we love and play and make. Uh, Jean-Luc, our writer, and Michel Coe. Michel Coe is the co-studio um, creative director, I don't know, Montreal for context. Um, they have so much, um, they have so much ideas for other games. They shared with us, uh, with us some of these ideas and it's super exciting. There's a ton of great games to make. An interesting part will be to choose what's the best one to do next, but there are already plenty of plans, end quote. So I'm going to quickly end the screen, share that. And obviously if you are an audio listener, we'll keep you up to date with what we're actually talking about. We're just pulling up the interviews on the actual screen. Adam, I think f- start with what Luke said, we we obviously know that the game this is the first entry in a franchise yes. um because it's already been greenlit this was revealed very early on just post um the game awards when it was revealed the game um i will be quite clear with where i stand in just an early 
point with this because obviously Jean-Luc is heavily involved in this. Jean-Luc had a big influence on Life is Strange with Michel working on that. Oh, I, I'm feeling um, a I, hot take here. Well, I would like, for example, the fact that, you know, even when he mentions there with Square Enix not being like the IP holder of this like property, for example, and he yes. mentions Life is Strange 2, I'm really already kind of thinking like the next game I really want to be like a Life is Strange 2 game where it's not four characters like Swan, Nora, Cat, or it You'll goes down a very different... Uh, Daniel and Sean to be the main Yeah, characters. like a very like a very different story like even if it's two male characters or if it's like three or four like, i don't want it to just to be like and i don't think it will be like you know just the same story that's told like with the first life is strange that was great in itself and obviously this game is making its own identity and carving its own part but i hope that they are really still like you know they haven't had a, a knock-on effect of how life is strange 2 was perceived by a big publisher because obviously they deeply appreciate it. if you ever speak to michelle and luke they they love when people love Life is Strange too. They, they, and even when we had Alejandro, for example, you know, when he mm. formerly worked at Square Enix, it's like he loves Life is Strange too. It's like one of his favorite games in the entire series. He related to it a lot. But I'm hoping that from the previous experience with Square, I hope that they don't deter away from doing those kind of stories because I think that Sean and Daniel's story was very unique. It moved it away from what has been seen before with like Life is Strange 1. Um, obviously, the shades of Life is Strange 1 in the current story we were seeing with Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. Um, but I do hope that there is really different directions, whether it's like a, um, you know, two Hispanic characters or, as, you know, not in, in the sense of like being complete copy, but it's like two Hispanic characters or it's two like French characters. I love, for example, like two French characters. Like mm. if they were telling the story in France, for example, every video game seems to be set in like America. It's like the go-to location and stuff. Yeah, because we're the greatest to... of all time. No question. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, that's why that's why they didn't set the game in Pennsylvania either. They were just like, "No, nah, we're not right. doing that. We're going to set it in." Yeah, it's the neighboring state of Michigan. <laughs> it is though. You literally right next <laughs> it's to not, it. It's not <laughs> as close as you think it is. Um, but no, I, I would love for them to tell those different stories. Like, do you know, if it was like in 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 a small no, town, I, in like I agree. Like, I'm getting kind of tired of games only being set in America. Like, I want a british game like i want them to be like oi there mates want to go for some fish and chips and then they go yeah from kent <laughs> if you if you are brought in as a writing consultant i am out i'm out of the podcast <laughs> i'm out of the game i am never ever going in that game Me, michelle will come I'll to me like I'm... like adam can you can you write a game set in england i'm like absolutely i can mate <laughs> and i'm gonna make a tiktok and send it to michelle and be like anything he says to you about english reference Please no, because he is they, not. Accurate. They love tea. They love crumpets. They love cricket. That's all you need to know. No, I would like them <laughs> to do other stories. I'd love to see a story, for example, in France. That would be a very interesting one. I like, would too. Yeah. Um, um, but how many games are set in France to begin with? Assassin's Creed Unity. Well, yeah, but I'm like saying, like, <laughs> I can only name like a handful, like Unity. I yeah. think. Of, no, Vampire is in England, I'm pretty sure. Was Valiant Heart set in France? Or was that a different part of the UK? Uh, sorry, a different part of Europe, sorry. Yeah, game set. Well, let's just continue my Google search. Because it's like, because like, I'm looking at all the stuff that don't know's major. Oh, the Saboteur. I'm so stupid. Mm. I love the Saboteur. I'll Remember Me was set in France. Yeah, oh, yes. Actually, Michelle mentions it in, in one of the recent interviews he did. The gamer, he talks about Remember Me and the Neo Paris setting of it, actually. Yeah, That's actually I'm, a... I'm so dumb. Like, um, it's also um, 8 a.m. in the morning. So, um, but yeah, we, we only have a handful of games here. Um, I'm, not call, I'm not doing the Call of Duties. But yeah, Deus Ex, Remember Me. Um, oh, Deus Ex. Oh. Yeah, Saboteur, Unity. Sly 2. Sly Cooper. That's interesting. But yeah, to, to, to go on our point here, is it like, I, there's not many games that are like set in like France and yeah. Don't Nod is France, man. So it's yeah. like, I, I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see them going something in their roots, but I like to see a, a different variation of stories. Whereas, do you know what as well? It's like an anthology. So it's like Lost Records Bloom Rate is an anthology story. It sets itself its own universe very similar to like Life is Strange, has its own kind of continuity connections. He's got something on his face here. What's he oh, sorry, at? there's way more games than I <laughs> thought. Because I'm on um, fan, uh, ultimate pop culture dot fandom. Games set Ooh. in France and Kingdom Hearts 2? There has to be like a level like, I can't yeah, remember. I'm... I feel like getting set in France is like a very loose term here. It's not like yeah. Unity where the game is set in France. It's like That's what I mean. Is... 
Like, there's yeah. a lot of loose games here, like Tekken Revolution. I'm like, yeah, yeah okay, there's a Paris yeah. level, you know. Yeah, that that doesn't count. Um, Adam, let's go back and see. Yes, here. yes, let's go back. I was just curiosity's sake. So this continues on to what's actually said as well. This is where Michelle gives a bit more context here as well. So said in terms of the dual set, um, the, the question was in terms of the dual settings of this game with the timelines. Did you from the beginning um, that you wanted? Did you know from the beginning that you wanted? Um, the dual narratives were de se several decades apart. And Michelle Coe, who is the studio cre creative director at Donald Montreal, the creative director on the game, said, yeah, um, this was really the starting point um, when uh, we got this idea five years ago with uh, Jean-Luc. It was here at Gamescom at the end of Gamescom where we were presenting episode four of Life is Strange 2. And we were starting to think, quote unquote, okay, we will have um, we'll have soon finished life is, with Life is Strange too. What what would we do next? End quote. And the very very beginning um, of this reflection was like quote unquote. Oh, it could be interesting to make a game with two timelines. End quote. Mm. Um, he thought because we were getting into our forties, we were thinking quote unquote. Maybe we want to start to, to talk about adults too, uh, talk about grown up characters like us, but we would still love to talk about teenagers. End quote. And we had this idea of starting to work um, on this game with a group of friends nowadays, meet, reconnect after a long time and start to remember and would play in the shared memories of their past. And they have to recollect things um, to build up to the puzzle of what happened. Uh, we didn't have a lot of ideas. We didn't know yet at the beginning that would be the story, but we had this idea for a game structure altering between two timelines and the gameplay idea we were sure from the beginning would be the choice um would be the choice you make in both that would affect the other so i'm gonna end that again one here yeah so that was just michelle again now giving context of it so obviously it's very early days that they've had these ideas luke's kind of said that they have ideas in terms mm. of the general scope of things so it's quite interesting to see that there's a little bit of a scope i'm kind of like i like the fact that he's accepting that we kind of got older here and we can talk about adults here because obviously we've grown up in their generation of like playing their games we're also adults it's like let's make a bit more of a reflective piece where the adults talk but then also still engage with their their youthful parts because i've always said to adam as well like nostalgia people love at the minute well i think some people get falsely led by nostalgia as well where they think something was great for what it was but it's not actually as great as it was they just yearn for it and i think that's what lost records is showing a little bit where it's like you go into the nostalgic moments but it's like and and michelle keeps saying it's like it's like you think about your memories and it's like are you actually building the right memory in your head is it is it as perfect as you think it was or is it you, your, your brain is telling you something different um so i, I would like really to answer that question um no i am not making things up it was better before <laughs> 2020 uh yes things were better <laughs> absolutely yeah I, I i i would personally say that there are there were a lot better if anything um i felt that <laughs> Yeah, I don't care. 2000, 2007, baby. Bring me back to 2007, specifically 2007. So <laughs> just putting that out there. Yeah, I um, yeah, I, I think I think he, I think they're doing some really interesting here with the story. Like, you know, we have seen things before, like it um, chapter two, where it's like, you know, they do the time jump. But I think like I find quite relatable these stories when they do stuff like this. It just makes it a lot more, you know, mm. it, it hits a lot more, if anything. Yeah. No, I, I, I like how, and we read this on another interview, I'm pretty sure, where uh, Michelle said that all of the, um, uh, the art design for the, the past timeline is much more colorful and creative, and then the, mm -hmm. the uh, adult timeline is a lot more dark and gray, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, there is a point of nostalgia and um, uh, writing that out as an adult perspective, for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm going to jump back into the interview here as well, so yeah. we can get into another section of it just to talk about. I think this was a very interesting point. This gives a more more confirmation. It's again from Michelle, but it says here, I know you guys can't give away too much, but in terms of where the story ends up can vary how much, how many different, not necessarily different endings, but how much different narrative pathing can play as experience. How do you picture them having to play through it um, to see everything? So Michelle said, and I quote, I think seeing everything would require a lot of playthrough. We have multiple endings, definitely, based on relationships, mm. on who are the closest to, oh. um, on who you are closest to, based on mm. some important choices through the game. Those will create different <coughs> endings for the summer, like when you recreate exactly what happened at the end of summer of 95, and different endings for the present <coughs> about the reunion evening and how the adults are reconnecting or not during, the present, during this day. Um, but we have much more than that. We have a small 
short-term consequences, like in the scene in the forest, right after the mo uh, right after this moment, you can decide if you go left with Nora or right with Autumn, or wait for Cat. And those end up having three different dialogues, um, different dialogues, and those dialogues are different based on what you've seen before. We are trying to put a lot of small, impactful variations in dialogues, um, in how people are recreating um, everywhere through the game. So I think that hopefully the playthrough will be unique for each player with those, with how you film the with the camcorder and seeing everything would take a lot. But I don't know if um, players have really have to see everything. End quote. So mm -hmm. I'm going to close that again. So a lot more there in that part. Yes. Um, and I think even that part as well where he mentions, I'm just reading it that way. It says that you can go left with Nora, or go right with Autumn, or wait for Cat. I think there's even a scene which I can't remember who I listened to, and I might be going crazy here. I mean, there's a kind of a scene in the in the gameplay that people have seen so far where, for example, Nora and Kat kiss, but it's kind of like one of those, like, you know, Chloe Price, mm -hmm. Max Caulfield kiss in the first game, where it's like, we just experiment with, like, little things, and then you can kind of speak to Kat, and she gives you a bit of reflection, being like, a bit like, ooh, I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't really feel that way. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of bit of processing moment with them. If you stay, so for example, as Michelle said, there you can go with different characters. I imagine you're building connections where it's like um, a little bit like Oxenfree. We spend times with certain characters. If you choose to acknowledge them, accept them, you know, you build a close relationship with them. If you just ignore them, you see the little thing pop up above their head, being like how they feel towards you. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 really quite keen on that. Here is my <laughs> dilemma. Uh, Mr. Adnan, uh, Senor Adnan, yes. um, reading this interview and seeing how the dialogue choices are, um, makes me sad that double exposure had to take this lo uh, little spotlight and I had to get this <laughs> game later than expected. I hate that I have to wait for this game. Makes me a very sad boy. I'm already <laughs> sad on a base level. I'm in therapy. I'm just I'm I'm a musician, so that's already points down for uh, sanity. So mm -hmm. I'm already a sad boy on the baseline. But seeing this interview, seeing the alpha footage, which we'll talk about later, I am a very sad boy that I have to wait for this game, <laughs> and double exposure has to take the light. So that's all I have to say about this right now. I, I will just say, I think if anything, maybe the extra marketing time gives them more time to get to people's, get it under people's nose, if anything. It doesn't solve my sad boyness. Adam. No, it doesn't, nothing, nothing will solve that. You've got broken Everything will heart. solve just, it. Listen to, some, listen to some Linkin Park, it might make you feel a little bit better. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> you're talking about um, that. Yeah, let's not, we'll, we'll leave that for the next, spread the art. Yeah. Um, no, I think, I think yeah, I agree with you, because I think like they've basically, I think they've uh, advanced their yes. storytelling i think like that's the best thing that i wanted to see if anything in the, in the gap between life is strange 2 and now with, with michelle making a game yes. and this is michelle's solo debut directional debut as well i think people need to remember as well there's no raul barbe so it's it, that's one of the interesting things i find about the game where it's michelle co as a solo director making this game um they basically just evolve the storytelling and they evolve like you've seen all those things we talked about adam we 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 love episodic gaming we love telltale we love life is strange we love the council we love all these games that were like different in their sense even oxen free yes. comes along but narrative storytelling had to evolve because of what happened to episodic gaming and it feels like this has done it where it's like we have two parts the month separate you get all these different choices variations things will impact it it's not just necessarily like you know this action will have consequences it's a bit more it seems a bit more deep seated in terms of the relationships you're forming with people. And yes. I'm hoping that this all like, you know, comes to fruition if anything. And obviously in itself, Adam as well, he says that um, you get different endings about what happened and what you recreate at the end of summer 95, because obviously that's the main focus point of it. But then also as well about the reunion evening and how the adults are reconnecting or not during this day, which mm. kind of confirms to me where people have already said that they think Cat might go missing and stuff. I still think all four characters will turn up. I would hope as well they turn up at intervals, um, because we'll talk about in the alpha footage as well. There's a very brief moment I caught in um, the Easy Allies one where it's like um, Autumn gets up. She gets up out of the chair and leaves while she's just looking at the package. Yes. So I'm hoping that you see other characters come into the booth and the area with you, so you kind of have, after a little bit so the conversation happen, another character joins you. And then it's like, it adds to the flavor of the conversation because I think that I'm more interested in those sequences where you're talking to Autumn in the present because it's like, those are going to be the ones where it's like, imagine if you were like a high school reunion 10 years later and you sing mm. with all those people and you're like, you're like, mm, I like yeah. you. 
It's like, I remember you. Do I like you? Do I not like you? It's like, that's the kind of experience I'm getting from those chats. So um, that's what I really mean. It feels like a, like a really in-depth game and storytelling. It really does feel yeah. like this is going to have much more consequences than even Life is Strange 2, you know? Yeah. Um, the reason why I, I love following Michelle Ko and, uh, of course, Jean-Luc as well is just because they're the type of artists that learn, not from their mistakes, but they just gain new knowledge. And they say, okay, how can we make this better? Not on the standpoint of we need to one-up ourselves, but we've we've mm -hmm. learned lessons and now we can improve on that. Whereas a lot of other artists from major corporations that we won't name don't seem to learn and they just put out garbage and just mm -hmm. like, great. But like, that's what I mean. Every time we see like something like this and the storytelling, it's like, okay, we saw that in Life is Strange 2, but this seems elevated. Mm -hmm. Oh, we saw that in Life is Strange 1, but this seems elevated. Oh, we saw this in Remember Me, which I haven't played yet. I'm trying to find a 360 version of it, and then I will play it. Um, and they learn from it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that. that's what it always feels like with this, you know? For sure. So... Adam, one last part I'm going to pull up here <laughs> yes. from the interview, and then we'll move on to the next one. And the next one's got quite a lot of repetitive things we know already. But I just want to bring up this last final section. I mean, you can go and read this interview on the screen run. Um, this is um, part of an interview with the producer, Kathy Vinicelli. Um, by the way, as well, just for context, Adam, I actually messaged her after, <laughs> after I read this interview and being like, yes. wait a minute. I was like, is your last name Vinicelli? Because I was like, I thought your last name was V. I was like, it's Kathy V. I was like, V-E-E. -E. I was like, am I like what yeah i'm like i'm like what i'm like <laughs> I, 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 not, I genuinely assumed her last name was v like v-e-e because -E, like that's how oh they all refer to her but what is i thought that was her last name i didn't know it was vinicelli i was like what i was yeah. like oh wow yeah but you live and learn eh? that's it yeah but it's like come on it's like um katie bent is called Catherine. it's like most people don't realize that like her first Damn. name is Catherine. um but anyway let's get into this as well yes in general there has been um Sorry, in general, has there been anything about this new game that you guys found more complicated or challenging to try and do compared to Life is Strange games? This is why I brought it back into the conversation, Adam, here, which is, mm. uh, Kathy says here, and I quote, in previous Life is Strange, I think dialogue was pretty straightforward when you were interacting with other characters. And we wanted to innovate and develop on that a little bit. So with our new dialogue system, it's more naturalistic. You have opportunities to interrupt people when you're talking, like you would in a regular conversation, maybe choose not to answer, using your environment to look around to see if you, there's anything you can trigger dialogue to start talking, and different ways to initiate dialogue as well. So this was um, something new that we brought to the table and had to work on, and it's a complex system. Mm. There's a camcorder system also that we heavily use. It's a tool that Swan is using to interact with the world around her since she's an introvert. Again, we are in the introvert part. Uh, just the fact of the video game, just the fact of the videos instead of the images, the encoding process for that, and having a collection of videos, which then become a memoir that you're able to rewatch as a little home video with Swan's voiceover on top, gives you more insight into the character, end quote. So that's the last part of the interview we're going to take from that. Mm. Um, and I found it really interesting because, like, again, We've always used a reference. I think Oxenfree has shown that that the fact that the narrative can flow a lot more seamless. We talked about you said it that they were former Telltale employees. They obviously made this yep. game, which has been highly impactful. Night School Studio, and it's been reflected in other things. I think this was the natural evolution for Lost Records, Blue Rage, and also for Don't Nod, because I think even now I will say this in a critiquing way. I think life is strange is one's dialogue option is outdated now and the same with two as well where it's like four choices and there's not much else because you feel like you feel fixed if anything you're just mm -hmm. sitting there looking at chloe and deciding whether you say x y a b c but then in the footage that we've seen the alpha version swan looks around the room you can see like different things and it unlocks for example different options and i think that's what you want because you want immersion you basically want to be sitting there as swan looking around thinking actually if i can name this band and i don't know anything about them it might actually make you know it might actually make me feel like i'm part of the group but then you might also get called out from it so yeah. it makes it makes you feel more immersed if anything um yeah about Definitely. the future so i thought it was a really interesting perspective that um from kathy um but yeah um anything else or we can move into our next part let's move into our next part because i'm excited for this 
Okay, so I'm going to move into here. Let me just pull this back up onto the screen. Okay. Share for you guys. So we're going to our next interview, and this will be from Games Radar. So this is a preview slash also fused with the interview quotes as well um, on the game. And we'll go here with Michelle for an example. Here's one of the quotes, which is, we were thinking back on what we did with the camera, or what we did not do with the camera with Max in Life is Strange. And we asked the programmers, quote unquote, do you think we could capture video all the time in the game and make it work? End quote. We felt it was a perfect tool to make you look at the environment, to be immersed in the world of the game, which is so important, and to look at your, um, to look at your friends to, start, to uh, sorry, uh, and to look at your friends to look at things. Mm. Um, end quote. And then Luke put on top of that as well, and I quote, it's cool because you can film almost all the time. You can capture, of course, game-related stuff, but there's also freedom to shoot basically anything you want. It's really cool to see everything with ourselves. We use the camera in a different way. When we play the game, Kathy is doing superb shots, and I'm doing messy stuff. Yes. But I'm happy to see my messy shots play back. Um, we cannot uh, We cannot wait to see how people will use the camcorder in creative ways, end quote. So I'm going to go end that quickly, and we'll go back to the conversation. Mm. So yeah, again more exposition on the camera. The camera is a focal point. I think it's been shown from the very early trailer of just one messing with her eye, for example. I know some people have like made theories about that potentially being her losing her eye or something, but you know, she's moving her eye because I think. I feel like people are stretching on theories here. Like, come on. Like, I think they scarred it or something. I think there's like this kind of theory that because like the whole the circles are whole the eye is like a circular thing, you know. And you don't like theories, do you? <laughs> it's an alpha footage. Like people, calm down. Like what the? I don't know. I think that was from the um the game the the game awards trailer when she when she's looking at her eye when she does that she moves her eye at the beginning of the trailer. Sure. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't just... like that. <sighs> I'm not really a theory guy. Like I I just stretch my imagination as far as I can, but I just. I don't know. I think some of these theories go out of hand. Well, the theories are always a fun part of that as well. Like we had our own little theories about this game and we've proven quite right on a couple of them, which was quite outstanding. It's like for the time jump and stuff, we were quite, it was almost like we were in their brains a little bit, which is quite impressive. But Adam, I have to ask you as well, are you a Kathy V kind of person of shooting stylistic shots? Are you a Luke Baggard uh, kind of person of who's, messy who's shots? Who's Kathy V? She's Kathy V to me. She's always Kathy V to me. Oh, Kathy Vincelli. Oh, yes, yes. Um um it wasn't just a v by the way let me just add that it wasn't just a v it was v e e and i made it on one of the graphics as well so i was like oh her name is actually kathy v when no, really kathy finicelli yeah oh my god wait can we get a proof of that i don't know uh um, what well her name's with v e e yeah it was on instagram it was on instagram it said like kathy v and they put it on other things where it says kathy v and i was like that's what i knew her as but vinicelli yeah. is her last name and i'm like I was like, what? Man, it's one I, of those I, moments, isn't it? You don't know people. I, I can't wait till there's a day that like we can visit uh Don't Know Montreal someday and you're just gonna like introduce yourself like so confidently, like, ah oh, yes, yeah, this person, like, no, that's not my person. But wait, I've always known you as this person. I I'm just gonna be sitting in the background, like your bodyguard. I'm just gonna be saying like, go on, introduce, say say who's who. <laughs> It's you never you never know these kind of things. You never know these kind of things. Yeah, but, but anyway, so Adam, confidently, like when we ever, whenever you see a photo of somebody, you're like, I well, know she exactly. refers to herself as Kathy V as everything. That's why I'm like, I was like, it must be. Yeah, but I never knew about Katie though until like my last interview of her in Life After Strange, where she was like, I didn't realize your name was Catherine. And she's like, yeah, it's Catherine. Wait, I was like, Katie who? Katie Benz. Wait, her name is Catherine. Yeah. Oh, oh, in your interview. Wait, did you say that in your interview? Yeah. Yeah, no, but I interviewed her like yeah. many times. And my yeah. assumption was her name is Katie, K A T Y. Yeah. But her actual name is Catherine. Did I know? It's that? Catherine Bentz. The, well, yeah. See, you want to call me out about Kathy V here? <laughs> and, and you get shocked yourself. Isn't it a little bit of a shock, isn't it? It's the system. No, she's not really mentioned it. She's very quiet about it. Like, even when I interviewed her back in. 2017 for before the storm yeah it's even in the interview it says katie benz and i always like specifically ask actors and stuff their full names and stuff but she just referred to herself as katie benz it was only until i did some digging where she called herself Catherine. i was like her name is Catherine benz i was like damn i was like that was quite crazy that that is kind of crazy yeah no well it's like it's funny because like i knew a guy legitimately named danny like i saw his driver's license 
his legal name is Danny. I'm like, all right, cool. Like they they just yeah. said like not Daniel. But it's like, but it's, yeah. like, it's like Diane Horton though. It's like Day is Day. Like most people would be like, but she never actually ever said her name was Diane. Most people would never realize that. They probably think Day is her first name, D A Y E. I guess, yeah, but no, Catherine kind of yeah, that that threw me through a loop. I don't. There you go. Yeah, you that, that's a start to my day. Um, are, you yeah. a, are you a Kathy V stylistic shooting person? Yes. Or are you a Luke Baggerdust sloppy kind of recording person? No, I do. I do appreciate uh, Kathy V's um, uh, interpretation of it. I, I do appreciate like the artists uh, going around and 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 saying something that's specific, and especially with um swan being a filmmaker not just like a person with a camera but like there's something specific and that's the language that swan speaks you know uh searching around and trying to find clues but like it is kind of like swan's way of speaking you know um i always go back to this there's this one tiktok where this uh this musician person is just like saying like like, why do we have to market ourselves? Why do we have to do this? The whole reason why we're doing music is because we're weird people. We don't know how to communicate. We communicate through music, and now we have to market ourselves and TikToks. This makes no sense. And I'm like, I feel that, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, the only way artists know how to communicate is through their craft. And so the way Swan interacts with the world is through her craft, you know? So I'm, I'm on Kathy V's side. Luke is um he's still my buddy but i disagree well you're not you're not a, a, style, a messy shooter kind of person i'm not like a he messy is. shooter i'm definitely yeah. not. see I, I i would like to think that i'm in the middle with what they do i think in my head i'm like a stanley kubrick style director like without camcorder however i'm probably more verging on like michael bay with explosions in the background and it's yeah. like i'm looking for havoc i think i've got a finite balance between them because i think like Kathy is probably shooting like great shots in terms of the camera, like very picky on stylistic mm -hmm. things. But I think like Luke is probably just like da -da 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 -da, like you know, grabbing as much things as he like can. a producer would. So there we go. Yeah, there we go. Perfect fit for that. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's seeing the bigger picture as you would. He's picking up all the all the details in one full swoop, if yeah. anything. But yeah, I think that the again, I think that the, the emphasis on the camera is like very revealing in terms of what they're doing. And I'm gonna pull up. One final quote here from this part of the interview, and then Adam will go straight into our, like bigger topic because I think yeah. it all pretty much relates to that because it's the alpha <coughs> knowledge. But in this one part here as well, uh, this is from Kathy again. She put, we don't want players to feel like they're getting punished for choosing something that they want to choose. It should be organic. You choose what you want, and then relationships will be adjusted based on that. That was her quote, end quote. And that was in reference to this part of Games Radar's piece, which said, in conversations, we can choose to say nothing at all or even say things too early and interrupt someone, which makes the dialogue system feel more natural. I mm -hmm. see how um, I see how I see how what I choose and say, um, say and do sometimes cause different hearts to show, which tell me I've gotten closer to a member of the group or they don't appreciate my response. Uh, Michelle says the team decided not to directly tell you who in the group is a recipient of a positive or negative feedback, but you should still have an inkling to those uh, to who is affected based on the conversations you're having. So that was another part of that. And this is from games radar as well. I think there's a piece here as well, early at the top as well about the camera as well. And this is from Kathy as well, but we've kind of again, alluded to that in the other interview. So I'll end it there, but yeah, all, all part of the focus on the characters, the dialogue system, if you'll all refine it. And should we just take that and start next part of the news, this part yeah. of the topic, if anything, because obviously I gave Adam the, the alpha footage to watch because Adam didn't know it was the alpha footage when we were talking in the last podcast episode. I think, the yeah. I think that's a natural reaction on YouTube where people are actually <laughs> surprised to realize something. But yeah, people went hands-on with this in terms of alpha footage from Gamescom. Um, mm -hmm. There's like a couple of videos we've seen online. So we have like pulled one up as well. We might show it during the, uh, during the actual podcast. But then there's also been other things. I think Greg Miller has spoken about this. Adam's listened to that. I've listened to it. And then also as well, I think Easy Ally, they've got Easy Allies. Easy allies, easy. yeah. Oh, did you yeah, listen to the kind of funny um, episode? Yeah, I listened to Greg's. Yeah, I listened to Greg's part of that. I, I know Michelle tweeted, so I listened to what Greg said about it. Um, so I think like Greg's, not, I think I've mentioned in that last podcast as well, where I said to you, like Greg said, like this feels natural when they're in yeah. like, a garage and it's like quite American style like environments. It feels like something he's related to. 
Um, so it, it is quite relatable to that. But yeah, there, there's, I think there's, the most I've seen is about 10 minutes and there's like certain shots. It's mm. like in Swan's bedroom was a big part of it. Nora's garage was another part. Um, the big kind of like area of the field that they go through where they're looking at, I think it's a cat's father's like allotment or something. I think it's, oh, I can't remember specifically mm. what the area is. It's a big area of like greenery that would go through and the final sequence. It's uh, the, the, the far, it's behind the farm. I believe. Yeah, the farm. Yeah. Sorry, the farm, not the allotment. The farm. Yeah, yeah. Um, that area, and then also as well the final part where they're in the room and they're rewatching back all the sections of the footage, and then something happens, lights start flickering, etc. Um, and then there's also as well different YouTubers have posted parts of the modern gameplay, if anything. So yeah, I, I thought we'd dig into this a bit more as well because obviously I think like I spent a lot of time filtering through this. I posted a couple times enough twitter pages and mm. stuff where um you've seen a lot of 90s references so i saw a lot of films in there i think there was like casper on like the film store there's um dark X crystal Files, there's tape, dark crystal there's um yeah. uh, which by the well. way when swan's like man i wish the dark crystal world was real i'm like why dude <laughs> have you Edmund, have you ever seen Introvert. the dark crystal <laughs> no Oh, buddy, when she said that, I was like, why would you want that to be real, dude? It's like no. introvert behavior. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's so. what she's saying. Dark um, crystal. I, I, I've, I've generally enjoyed like what I've seen so far. And, and I think like it's, it's hard because like, obviously I'd love to go hands on with it myself. And like, because when you like, you see someone's like moving them, I'm like, move over there, please. Like, pick that up because I want to see a bit more. They're, they're playing in their own style. But like, early interactions i think it's quite like in her bedroom for example i love the fact that we had obviously pumpkin in there which is a cat um obviously we've seen michelle sweet before we covered it on the podcast where he said like not everything is as you've seen as well something might be mm. different there i can't say right now but you can film pumpkin it gives you a bit of an exposition on using the camera and creating some of the clips you have swan's voiceover as well which is quite cool i love the the voice of swan um and then also as well the outfits as well which is quite nice i love that do you know because this is double a a game as well yep. it's like self-published by don't know like these aren't laced in microtransactions and it's just like what you get is what you get given and i think that's i think this is why people gravitate towards these games as well because it feels authentic in terms of the developers and publishers are giving you what you had 20 years ago uh, for free content but then as like even in her room as well it's quite nice to kind of feel like i felt quite old seeing her room as a 90s baby myself yes. i felt like just being in there i felt like it they've they've really understood that environment i think that Early on, already just from some of the dialogue interactions, I think Nina Freeman and Desiree's work is already being shown in terms of the characters, the young girls, because I think that they they feel quite refined in the way they speak and they talk as well, and they're different kind of like personalities. But I'm really keen to see more of like how the conversations flow because I saw one point as well. It's like in the graphic in the bottom right corner, when you're picking your dialogue options, two of them are like draining really fast. And the third option just stays as it is. So it feels like if you don't pick either of those, those two options, you get stuck with one of the options and it's just the the way the conversation mm. goes. Yes. But I feel like when I was watching it, I was like, I felt quite immersed by it. I felt uncomfortable, like in terms of like doing Swan sitting in the garage with these new girls, because um, in the e Easy Allies footage, they basically say that Swan meets the girls because she's going to the movie palace and she's like getting confronted by couple of people or something like i mean she might be getting bullied and the girls kind of swarm in with them obviously that's why it's kind of a little bit of an awkward interaction when swan yeah. walks in the garage and she's like and like like oh we never thought you'd come here it's like we just like we assumed you weren't going to come but she came and i think like it's quite unnatural for that experience of being like a teenager and then meeting new people and trying to like be friends with them and try to be cool and when swan is like as an introvert mm. um but yeah generally speaking i i've enjoyed what i've seen from that gameplay trailer and gameplay and i've like scoured through all the different variations of gameplay so far and by I think... the way with the easy oh. allies um <laughs> they <sighs> missed something huge in mm -hmm. terms of just like um a reference they were they were just like saying like oh yeah we love life is strange <laughs> they talked about the magic eye they talked about the magic eye image and now is the, so there's a magic eye uh picture and you can zoom in on it and the guy goes like, oh, it actually works. And you can see it. And it's a deer. That's so nice. <sighs> if you can see this picture up here, right there, little deer, that's a Life is Strange reference right there. So they're all we're already seeing just from the alpha footage that we're seeing clear as day Life is Strange references within this. Yeah. One. You got the Vortex Club um, 
the vortex that, club. Quite nice. That's all within this alpha footage. So, like, imagine the entire game. Like, they're going to put in so much Life is Strange references that we're going to go <laughs> nuts. But yeah, just the magic I, eye they had. Yeah. A deer. I'd like I'd like them to have like a lot of nods to that other <laughs> games as well. Do you like don't nod games like like Banishers and stuff like that? Yeah. I think they will as well. But it'd be nice to see those kind of like little references, um, and even maybe Oxen Free. Oxen Free Two might be a bit too late, but you know I think like any other variation of games that have been impactful. I mean, as you said, it's like very brief because I think that I think that's the fun you have with this game because it's set in the nineteen nineties that timeline. You already have pop culture references because you have tv shows and movies you have the x files for example you have batman you have all this kind of stuff you even have a troll doll on her desk for example yes it's like i can't even tell you the last time i saw a troll doll like that's how like I, like even i think even now as well my um my niece who's gen alpha was playing with tamagotchi and she was like yeah this is tamagotchi i was like i know what tamagotchi is my 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 dear niece it's like don't have to tell a 90s baby what tamagotchi is but it's so like so i got my gen z friend a tamagotchi mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> because Gen Z wants to say that, like, oh, yeah, we love the 2000s. We love the 2000s. Like, you don't even know, brother. So I, I got him a Tamagotchi. And, like, the next day, he's like, do they always go off? Like, do I, they always like, to beat him? Like, you say you want to live in the 2000s, baby. But that's what the 2000s were. <laughs> Just yeah. 90s Tamagotchi, early 2000s Tamagotchi. Don't try to tell us that like we we had an easy street. Tamagotchi's dog and trolls no, you, and Furbies. Furby, Furby, see, that's the thing. I like think Furby's I don't like... think Furbies were ninety five though. I think Furbies came around in ninety nine. I want to say. Yeah, they seemed like a late nineties trend. I don't it was like a late nineties. Yeah, but yeah, uh, continue. Uh, no, so it's like those are like little neat touches. So as you said, I think like the Easter eggs are going to be laced in this game because like you already are a game that's like paying homage to the cultural references you have in there. Ninety eight, by the way. Ninety eight. There you go. So you have Furbies there, for example. It'll be interesting to see what kind of pop culture <coughs> reference they have because like we all live different like things in the nineties in terms of like our different experiences. Like we all have like certain associations. So it's like we all know what Furby is. But was there like anything in France that was a bit different in the nineties, or mm. even America that's a bit different, during cultural ref relevance wise? Um, like, cause well, I, I we had less of... fish and chips in the uh, in the nineties. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna like that's that, that's the that's the Freudian slip there. It's like yeah, I, I just just um, I yeah, so just like you. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I I thought it was a really cool part where they mentioned the Easy Allies preview. If anything, where it's like when you're at the end and you're watching stuff on the TV that's footage that you've collected yes. you know, before it has that little stack staticky moment and the, the <clears throat> video tape the video camera plays itself yeah it's a collection of the stuff that you've recorded so it feels that feels almost very kojima-esque where it's like you basically take all these different things that you've done in the game and then put it towards mm -hmm. a certain point in the game and it's like it feels more interaction based so it's kind of cool that your camera has more meaning than just recording collectibles recording this recording that because then you can create these shots and then infuse them into a later point in the game. And then obviously you have the voiceovers, which is quite nice. I think it's just that little kind of feel good factor when you're playing the game and you feel like your hmm. content is being shown in some kind of way. Um, yeah. Um, and by the way, as well, I wonder how Luke felt when he saw his sloppy shots there as well on the TV. That'd be quite funny to see the reaction of like yeah. Swan and be like, oh, this is artistic, artistic genius. And it's just like Luke aiming at the sky, like yeah. his camera. But I, I, thought, I thought that what I saw was very good. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy so far. I think it's just, it feels like a natural evolution from Life is Strange 2, personally speaking. More so than the first game, I think. I think that that, that second Life is Strange 2, where, where you, you stand ashore and you're playing, you're walking around, you're speaking with people. That's the immersion I kind of get from this Lost Records game. Because mm -hmm. Max is built with rewind. So every time you'd walk four steps, you'd probably rewind just for jokes. That's what I'd do, if anything, when I was playing as her. But with Sean, you're always constantly walking mm -hmm. or exploring and interaction. And... Sometimes when I watch Lost Records now in terms of the alpha footage, that's the kind of like, I, I wish those kind of like mechanics were pr transplanted into Life is Strange 2, for example, because people probably would have vibed off it more because if you had more immersion in the story, because that's yeah. about connecting with people, speaking to people, having this experience. And I think that's what's happening with Swan because it feels like when I'm like watching it and she's like walking through the farm area, for example, it feels so green. It feels like when you see the locks on there and it has like codes and stuff, I, I do wonder how much like, like, are you going to do like a little side tracking mission there? Yeah. Where it's like you find out what the code is. Is it written on a tree somewhere? Um, and even like the references to like the locks and stuff. I know people put them everywhere and it's like, you shouldn't really be putting them on like bridges and stuff because it weighs down the structural integrity or something like that. 
Um, I didn't know that. Told I, off in a... I didn't know that was a concern. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes. So they have done it in like is it in, is it in Golden Gate Bridge? I think some people have tried to like put locks on it before. Do you like? Oh, I didn't know about the Golden Gate Bridge. I know there's that. Um, oh, I forget what the bridge is, but yeah, it there, might not be the gold, It might be the bridge you're thinking. Of. It might be. I might throw the Golden. It's it's a bridge in America. I know some people have tried to like put those locks on that, and they basically give me like this is a health warning because if you put too many yeah. locks on it, it's going to destroy the structural integrity of this. And it's like, that's what they always say to people. I like put them on like a fence or something. Hence why you see it yeah. now. It's like they rust up after a little bit, they weigh down a fence, whatever. But I, I, I like the fact that there's going to be moments where, for example, they've kind of spoke about, it and we read it in the article. It's like Swan will have an interaction with Nora. And then you kind of like can stop for a moment and speak to her. Um, and you can like have a chat with it. Again, it reminds you of Oxenfree, get off the dock. And it's like, you know, um, Alex, wait, can I speak to you, her brother? And it's like, yes. and then you have, um, I can't remember, what's her friend's name called? Uh, um, Ren. Ren. And Ren's like, you know, he's like, he's like um, can I stay? And it's like, no, Ren, just like, you know, you need yeah, to keep, keep on skedaddle. Moving. Yeah. So yeah. I can speak to her brother. So I think like, it's all about the immersion of like gameplay. I think that so long as we get good balance in terms of the conversations and the immersion on the camera, I think we're going to get a very, very solid game in terms of a narrative storytelling because it could build the same kind of like following a, a, like a cult, like following like oxen free um, lost records, blue and rage. If it has, you know, if it, if it does what I think it's going to do. And I'm, I'm hoping that this sees some success from it, but I've seen early interactions. I think one of the things, as I said to you before, was very interesting with like Nora and Nora um, Swan sitting there. And then um, awesome gets out of the chair. So she's in the adult thing. She gets out of the diner chair and it's, you're just sitting there looking at the package. And I think that that adds to a bit of a flavor where she kind of like, will leave a little bit. And I think it reminds me of the the first Assassin's Creed when Lucy comes into the door and she speaks to you when you're in the present with Desmond. Um, and then they'll disappear and then you can kind of like walk around the lab and like pick up yes. on little details. I'm kind of hoping that we have that kind of immersion in the, in the modern setting because it look good. But generally speaking, I've vibed off of everything I've seen so far for all the different gameplay trailers I've seen so far, all the gameplay footage, if anything. Um, is there anything else that you have in there that you've noticed? There's one thing that really stood out to me, and it's the, mm. uh, the dialogue system when they ask you, what's your favorite band? Yeah. That's what stood out to me the most in this, because this is Michel when he was saying that he's, he's accepted himself. He has uh, embraced who he is as an introvert. Uh, I'm starting to get into this uh, mindset now because... Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about masking, Adnan. I don't know if you know about that. Just a little uh, bit. <clears throat> just a little bit. But this feels like uh, – that question feels like what Michelle went through as a, as a kid, and now he mm -hmm. knows what to do. What I mean by this, when they ask you that, you have four options, right? There's the top two that are, oh, I'm not really into music. I'm more into movies, which is a boom. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. that's who I am as a person. You have the bottom section where it's like, uh, I don't know, my dad puts on classic rock, <laughs> another honest answer. Or you can scramble and just look around yeah. the room, hopefully find something. This is what masking is, is just trying to find something to latch on to so that you can just get through that conversation. Not mm -hmm. just like saying like, oh, I'm going to lie and say that I'm into it. But you are just so um, – you're just so self-conscious that you're going to get the wrong answer. And I'm just trying to make my headphones even. Don't worry about me, everybody. Everything's good. Um, but it, it's just kind of like you're trying to find on so, so you can get further in that conversation. And hopefully yeah. no one catches you that you're a phony. Or you can be uh, steadfast and confident in who you are as a person and say – I'm more into movies and music. So yeah. like there's, there's that thing. So that really stood out to me. And that's definitely a Michelle matured kind of dialogue. Mm -hmm. No. And I, I like that because I'm going to add on to what you're saying here, Yes, which is this little sequence. I'm going to play it here. If you can see it <laughs> on the recording. So this is, which from, is uh, that there's the, uh, there's the, the, the image that we saw from the, the teaser with the, yeah, which is there is the, the, and the pop tarts the, and the pop tarts. Anyways. But if you go over here quickly, Yes, so as, sorry, as said, that's I got distracted image. by the Pop-Tarts. But if you look at the option here, so this one's like fixed. So basically, can you see that under Sub Comrades? Yes. The timer starts playing. So it's like yes. when you click on it. And I like that, for example, because it's like, look at them, they're all going. So it's like nonstop. 
yeah so it's like when you keep clicking on it it's like it, it kind of speeds up and speeds down on it it's like they if you click on it it's, now it starts draining it continues to keep draining it disappears yes and i like I, I love that little feature when i was looking at because it, it's like as to what you're saying because basically you're in that room and you're exposed to all these different things with the conversations you're having with the girls and it's like if you mess up there's no rewind there's no rewind my friend here it's like basically like you're stuck with the options and i love that there's that kind of urgency when you click on something what was one of the options and it starts draining and then you go on to the other one and it starts draining as well and it's like actually you need to kind of be in the moment pick in the moment and be like immersed in what you're doing with the girls because that is a natural conversation you're not going to do what the first life is strange or the second life is strange did where like you know david madison's got like the weed body he's like max is this you that was smoking this and then it like stops for like 30 minutes and you can pick your decision and it's like he's standing there this is like have you been smoking this reefer and it's like and you just standing there with it and you like look at it and it's like yeah you, you, the, nat the natural immersion is destroyed because you're basically spending more time thinking about it this is why for example we probably love telltale games as much as we did because it was constant it was like duh. when you start a conversation with someone yeah. you speak to kenny and he's being a douche or you speak to like you know someone else in 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 the walking who's being like a really annoying character you're in the moment because he's not going to stand there looking like yeah exactly. you kind of have to pick something you have to like the conversation goes naturally so i think that's one of the best things that we see so far where it's like if you don't pick something it might be an awkward silence and it might be because of your reaction in the real time um and lastly as well because I think we can kind of close out as well uh, towards the end of, uh, if you don't have anything else to add. But for me as well, one of the things that I really liked was the lighting and the environment and, yes. the, and, the, and the, the really juxtaposition that you have when you basically, I've seen the shots where you kind of go back, back and forth from the present timeline mm -hmm. in with autumn at that point at least, and then go back to the earlier stuff, for example, when you're in the farm or you're in Swan's room, the color just like constantly just changes. And it's like the mood is reflective of what's happening and the world you're in. And we talked about this before in one of the podcast episodes about Michelle's like influence with lighting and like character art and, and background and art artistry. But I think there's such an untouched thing with like some developers, some developers for me just, just don't appreciate what light can do for a game. And it's like, I, I've, my, my entire perspective on lighting change when, kojima started doing with the fifth metal gear game it's like he had this kind of like reflective thing that happened on like any blade it would be like a light mm. that bounced off it it was like he just kept putting emphasis on something with like lighting and it feels like that with this game you have like i think luke spoke about in, in one of the interviews where it's like you have a bit more of a colder color palette when it's like in the modern yeah. setting and then when you get into the in the vibrant bright bright 1995 yeah. of, of velvet co and i think as well funnily mm. enough I think that's probably how you think of the 90s as well. When I think about it, and I said this to you before, it's like going to a McDonald's in the 1990s, it was colorful. It was yeah. bright. It was like, you know, it had all these little things. You know, if you were in the 90s, you'd be wearing blue jeans and you'd be like wearing a, a striped top with like at different At Burger colors. King, at least in America, we had N64 consoles in the play area. We had them. We had them. Yes. They were built into, yeah. built into like the things where you could like go up yep. to them and had a control. Yep. And you go into yeah. McDonald's now and it looks like a... Uh, even a mcdonald's or a burger king it looks like the most corporate thing an n64 and now has been replaced with a, a self-service screen where you can pick out your own order and like yeah. put it through and it's like that's what's been lost about it so i think like it's the, the natural yeah. yeah of course i think i think it's reflective that game is telling you more like on the on the own experiences of what you have because as you yeah. said if you're on the your gen z friend who's got a tamagotchi isn't going to be able to relate to those experiences because we grew up like a large portion of our early life in the 1990s and saw those kind of like Bright, vibrant and bright colors and it was like you know life was simpler and there's a floppy disk on the table and stuff but it's like now you don't see anything like you'd see like a usb drive or something or you'd see like someone streaming something or apple music swan mm -hmm. holloway would be like a lost records journal listener rather than a like you know yeah. a textbook reader or something it's, it's just a different world isn't it yeah. um so yeah I'm, I'm all keen for it i was very disappointed though by the way that swan holloway was not listening to the lost records journal in her house in her on her computer or something which is you know caused me a little bit deep though we didn't get a yeah. reference there but yeah you never know you never know but you know she might be listening to podcasts at some point um but yeah we'll keep up to date with that as well as we go forward i'm sure we'll see a lot more leading up to launch as well um but i'm, I'm very excited obviously nonetheless Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm super stoked. Um, I'm a little bummed that tape two is coming out two weeks before I move, so I'm just gonna delay like, the move. Delay the move, man. I can't. I gotta move. So like when we report on the final one, this whole room is gonna be empty. Like everything's gonna be so bare bones, <laughs> and I'll be like, "Yeah, it was great. It was a great game." And then I have to like get in the truck. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. such a uh, yeah. They, 
Well, I, I, I think I think personally, my early prediction for you of anything is going to be, I think they're going to set up on a very, 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 like, you know, fantastic cliffhanger ending. And I think when you get to the point where you're going to be moving, you're like, you're going to be like, I need to play this. It's like, I can't, I don't think, yeah. you, I, I personally don't think you're going to be able to move without playing that game, the second chapter. I mean, like, I will I be able to, see I'm not up. moving till April 1st. So it's just, it, the, the final one's coming out like two weeks before the move. So I'm just like. But it's going it's to be one of those moments where it's like, Liz is carrying the boxes and you're just playing like, uh, it's like, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't like not be playing yeah. this. It's like, I'm too. Oh no, I already I, told I, her that it's just like, it's going to be just so weird. It's just going to be so weird. Well, yeah. My expectations are here for a cliffhanger ending, by the way, for the first chapter. Yeah. Like, definitely. Don't Nods, the, the, the Michelle and Luke and, and the Don't Nod team for the first two Life is Strange games as well are like certain points when they ended episodes, they were like, oh, they were so good at like ending with a cliffhanger ending. And this yeah. is like just two parts as well. So I'm expecting the first part to be like the most mind blowing thing ever, if anything. Like, that's where my expectation is currently at. There's no, there's no like, you know, me- I can't be lowering that in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Adam, should we call it a day here? I think we should. Yeah, perfect. So thank you for joining us, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Let us know what you think about Lost Records. Let us know what you think about the Alpha Forge. Obviously, we're very excited. Let us know if you picked up on anything we didn't notice either. It will always be interesting to hear. And yeah, if you are new here, as always as well, please do consider dropping a subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications, like the video, and share with your friends. I hate saying it, guys, but it really does help support us. Um, and also as well, Lost Records General available all podcast services. So we're available on Spotify with a video version, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music. We're available on everything, even Audible, as Adam has said before. So do yes. check us out on there. Please do rate us on Spotify as well. It really helps us. And on Apple Podcasts, we haven't got any ratings on Apple Podcasts yet. So mm. if you do listen to us on those, please do. And then also follow as well for your own sake because you get podcasts instantly as they are live and you can't complain with that. So yeah, and thank you again for everyone helping us hit 50 followers. That's great to see. Um, but yeah, we'll be back later this month. There's actually a second episode of Lost Records Journal coming out later this month. There's also a Strange Cast episode that will come out the week after this. So do stay tuned. There's plenty to talk about for Lost Records. We don't know Montreal among many other things. But yeah, until next time, take care. We'll see you later. Bye. Peace.